Kandinaki is situated at central Cape York, at the top of Queensland, which is in Australia. The environment which is the homelands are situated on is riparian forests, a riverine environment, open bushland, open savanna, uh, heatlands, pine thickets, subtropical and tropical rainforest. Also, we got spring-fed mountain lagoons system, all throughout the catchments. Northern Kandinaki, which is Kukuiyo, we call it, is situated on Kanaki, which is the plateau. And so we have the boundaries of Kukuiyo. The Pasco River runs on the eastern side of it. Then the, the one lock on the western side, then you've got the arch on the southern side, and then you've got the Olive River on the northern side. My clan estate is Kukuiyu, which is all of northern Kanja homelands. It's what you can call my reign or my governance. They are all my people from my ancestors and my stories you know, that I represent. We have stories, places like Mula, Mulawi, what we call Mula, Mula Tampanyu, which, which is an area north. And um, that area is where the crocodile actually heaped up all the, the rocks. It's like a big nest belong to it. So that's where all the eggs are, in terms of where the crocodile actually made the people and the animals. And then you got Mata, mean big reef, which is Mount Kara on top. Right next to it is a place called Yanki, is where the rainbow serpent, that's, that's where she come, that's where my grandmother is. From my grandmother's side, on the other side, her name was Chinka, meaning uh, the native cat. And you've got Kutuni on the other side, which is the cassowary, which has uh, the crown of the cassowary when you look at the hill. And you've got Nyaku, you've got Nantanchi, you've got Ituri, which is the little red being. We come out of the heart, which is coming from Malandachi, which is you know, around the area of the Embley Range and all that. But all those stories, they all in the song lines of the Bora. We have Bora grounds all over the region, which is on the highlands and next to water. The Northern Kanjungati was intact in the first place. It, it, it had its people, it had its story, it had its uh, autonomy for those people. It had its management, it had its governance. That was before. When colonization came in, they actually disrupted that by taking the people out of that land. Then, through putting us inside centralized places, all bundled up into one bag or package, that really made a problem for our Aboriginal people. And now, it's you know we have to straighten all that back by coming back to our homelands. Well, the repatriation, the happening is people actually moving back to their homelands, recognizing where they're coming from and recognizing the bloodline, recognizing the kinship. Uh, our story is from Chula. 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 No story. Story. Yeah. They can take people out of the land, but you can't take the land out of the people. One part of the homeland's development is a place called Chulamun, Chula for short. Chula means the frill neck lizard, and Chulamun meaning the place of the frill neck lizard. That's where we started our homelands development or our homelands movement. We can use Chulamun as the hub to actually develop. It's a hub because all the other homelands or clan estates are sacred areas. 
So Tulungun is like where women and children can go and a whole range of elders and can all meet in one place. It's where actually our ancient development was in the first place. So that's why we wanted Tulungun to be a repatriation of that. Around about the 1980s, our older elders moved back to Tulungun to set up camp. A lot of our elder ones that were there now are gone, passed away. And then you got a new generation, young generation. People that we can accommodate now are the main core families that will hold the fort to wait for those other, other families to come back. So we had to start Chulungon Corporation in order to uh, have some sort of recognition in the Western world, you know, in terms of uh, governance, arrange governance arrangements because of uh, our governance arrangements isn't recognised. We now having some infrastructure and stuff like that being built over so many years so that it can accommodate the work that we need to do in terms of land management. We first started out with tents. I actually applied for funding for uh, proper sheds after that and then uh, proper infrastructure. This is my house. Um, this is the office. This is the guest house. This is the Chula School. We do um, distance education. Well, now Chula one has an escort got that up and they've got the regular mail services coming now every week. We yeah. started off with radio, mm -hmm. then we came to telephone, but now we got satellite internet. We have a 7 kVA solar power system. We set up our ranges, we set up our workers so we can actually set Tulungun as an example for other homelands so that they can follow. We manage the land in accordance with the rules and the protocols of what the land provides uh, for us from ancient times. We do land management, we do feral animal control, stopping invasive weeds coming on the land, controlling and managing third party people, other people that comes onto the homelands, soil and erosion control, vegetation programs in order to make the land sustainable for us. Putting back our original fire management that was told to us by the land. Uh, running this, go down. Well, some of the training would be having shooters license and boat licenses. We have different permits, certificates in, in terms of the conservation and land management program, which is Cert 3. We're doing weed identification programs. We're doing GIS mapping so that we can start doing our databases electronically with our computers. Uh, we're doing internet setup, how we can get onto the internet and work, work ready programs. We have money there for consultancy. What we're trying to do with those consultants is not only pay them to do some of the work, but to also train our rangers in order to correlate that two-way learning processes. We have fields in, in that aspect of databasing, how to set up database, movie making, so that in film we can actually do our own documentation. Before the indigenous knowledge side of it, you know, we want to repatriate that back on homeland so that, you know, uh, our younger generation or, you know, even our, our uh, generations which are in those centralized places uh, can actually come back out of those centralized places to grab what's, you know, rightfully theirs. My grand Father is going to show us some plants. That's the white grenade, actually. It's another belly egg. Just belly egg. Another one. Just white coat. White coat. White coat. Cooking the belly. Chew that. Chew that leaf. 
all our land management programs, all our consultation programs in terms of those projects that we have there uh, at Chulungun is all ongoing. It never stops. You never stop from learning. My main two aspirations is people coming back to land, right? And learning for themselves about the uh, uh, knowledge and, you know, learning about the knowledge that was provided by the land and passing it down to the younger generation. So the aspiration would be, it has to be sustainable in a sense. Sustainability means proper management in place, proper governance in place uh, for that certain area. Whatever comes out from Payanamu is translated down to their stories in each clan estate. Each story places, it's not my role to look after, it's those people from that area. If we don't protect, if we don't, you know, look after these story places, look after our culture, look after our tradition and grab and hold of it, then we don't exist.